the United States entered the race with this Boeing design, seen here in a full-scale mock-up. The Boeing 2707, with its extravagant swing-wing configuration, would be one-third faster and twice the size of Concorde. Boeing proceeded at its own pace, believing that when the 2707 emerged, it would win the market. In the US, the Kremlin also studied Boeing's SST design, analyzing its aerodynamics and construction details. But Boeing's yet-to-be-realized SST had this feature as well, a necessity in all three aircraft. The U.S. supersonic program also ran into problems. Boeing was forced to abandon a major innovation, its swing-wing design. Configured to increase lift at low speeds, it proved too heavy for the aircraft. Engineers acknowledged that the plane could fly across the Atlantic, but only without the added weight of passengers. This miscalculation marked the beginning of the end for U.S. participation in the supersonic passenger market. In the U.S., Boeing fared no better. After its swing-wing design was rejected, it did go on to build a model of a smaller fixed-wing SST. But the project finally fell victim to the same forces that compromised the success of Concorde. Pressure from environmental groups and congressional scrutiny closed the program in 1972.